grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us pray. Almighty God, you have adopted us as your children through faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word who became flesh. Let your light shine through our lives to the praise of your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. And without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, yet his own people did not accept him. But to all those who receive him, who believe in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known to us. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Grace to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, are you having deja vu? <laughs> because Pastor Nestigan came to me a couple weeks ago. He said, you know what? I kind of want to preach on John chapter 1. I said, okay, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> so he did. He preached on John chapter 1. And the beautiful thing about the Word is it continues to uh, change our lives. And as it comes in, in contact with us, uh, we see the world uh, through a diff- in a different way. It was uh, difficult to say goodbye to Pastor Wall. After all the experiences that you've had with him, after all the things that he's done for you, after all the, the ways that he's been there, uh, it's tough to say goodbye to him. It's tough for me to. And uh, that's okay. During this time, um, it's, it's good to share uh, your stories with each other. Uh, share with each other uh, the ways that uh, he was a part of your life because uh, that'll never change. And yet, uh, also during this time, it's important to, to make certain that we're reaching out to people uh, within the congregation and around in the community to make sure that they're doing okay. Because um, the people that Pastor Rolf touched are far beyond these walls. So if you don't see someone in church, it's okay to give them a call or to stop by and say, how are you doing? And if they want a pastoral visit, you come to me, and I'll come and visit. I've, uh, Pastor Rolf heard about this. I did, too, um, that someone was calling our congregation and, and asking them, well, what are you going to do now that Pastor Rolf is gone? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, she gave a piece of mar- her mind to the person. But um, we get a little protective of the sheep. <laughs> so um, if you hear of that happening, um, I have no problem going up and talking to that person, you know, because it's about a community of faith. It's not about a building. It's not about a pastor. It's about the community of faith, and we're all together. So the unique thing about the Old Testament is uh, we understand God as the shepherd of the people. In, uh, the, Old Te- in the Old Testament, God is the only, uh, the only religion in which God is understood as a shepherd is uh, the Jewish religion. And he does that uh, very pointedly and for a particular reason, so that the people understand uh, that he is very personal. He guides us with rod and staff in hand, he says, in, um, in Psalm 23. The rod is to discipline, but the staff is for guidance. And that crook is sometimes to save our neck, huh? That's what he does. In Jeremiah, we, we hear, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. He who scatters Israel will gather them. Not only does God, did God scatter the people of Israel, but he gathered them together again. And he, it says, He will keep them as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob. He has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. In Ezekiel, it says, I will save my flock they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set, set over uh, them one shepherd, my servant David. He shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, I the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. In Micah chapter 5, verse 2, it says, But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the least of the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give up until that time when uh, she who is in labor is brought forth, and the rest of the kindred shall return to the people of Israel. He shall stand and feed the flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. He shall be one and there shall be peace. In Jesus, Jesus in Matthew 9 says, he, When he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion because they were harassed and they were helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And John says, When, when he sees Jesus, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. That is, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
All things came into being through him, and not wi- and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And that word was made flesh and dwelt among us. It was Jesus. And we beheld the glory of God, God's only Son. So Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. You may feel as if, uh, now that Pastor uh, Rolf has retired, that you are a, sh- you are a sheep without a, flo- uh, without a shepherd, and yet Christ is your shepherd. He always has been. We follow him. There was a young young man that went in for an interview. And he went in for an interview. He was feeling pretty good about this interview. He had great marks and academically. He was uh, very astute. And the director that was interviewing him said, did you obtain any scholarships in school? And he said, no, I, I didn't. He said, well, was it your father that paid for your school fees? And he said, well, no, my father passed away when I was one. My mother is the one that paid for my school fees. Where did your mother work, he asked. Well, my mother worked cleaning clothes. The director requested the youth show his hands to him, and so the youth showed him his, his hands, and they were perfect, and they were smooth. He said, did you ever help your mother wash clothes before? He said, no, I never. My mother always wanted me to study, to read books, to make sure that I did well academically. Besides, my mother could wash clothes faster than I ever could. The director said, well, then I have one request. When you go home today, I want you to, to clean your mother's hands and then uh, come in tomorrow and see me. The youth felt a little bit odd about it, but but he decided to go, go home and do exactly what the director had said. So he went home and he said, uh, Mom, he said, I think the interview went real well, but the interviewer had a really weird or odd re- request. He wanted me to clean your hands, so is it okay if I do that? And she was a little bit reluctant about it, but she said uh, that would be just fine. So the youth um, took his mother's hands and slowly he, he started to clean them to wash them. And tears fell from, from his cheeks as he noticed that his mother's hands were so wrinkled. And uh, there were so many bruises on her hands that were painful. And she'd wince when he'd go over those bruises. And he realized that she had done all this so that she could pay for his education. After cleaning his mother's hands, he quietly washed uh, the remaining clothes for his mother. And he sat down, and they had a nice, long talk. The next morning, the youth went in to see the director again. And as he was in uh, talking with the director, the director noticed that there were tears in his eyes. And he said, uh, can you tell me what, you, what took place yesterday? And he said, well, I, I cleaned my mother's hands, and I also finished cleaning all the remaining clothes. Now I know, he said, now I know what appreciation is. Without my mother, I could not be who I am today. By helping my mother, only now do I realize how difficult, how tough it was for her to do it on her own. I I appreciate the importance, the value of helping one's family. The director said, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And I want to recruit a person that can appreciate and help others, a person who knows what it means to suffer with others, to get things done, a person who would not put money as the goal, but others, others, uh, others' lives. He said, you're hired. And so the young person worked very hard, very diligently, despite his uh, subordinates, and uh, the subordinates, uh, he re- won them over. The... Uh, the uh, company performance improved tremendously under him. That is a little bit of a parable. In a society where um, people think that they are entitled to certain things, you know, 
Do you, you ever see this? The kid, uh, kids are like, well, uh, where, I, I'd ask them, what are you getting for Christmas? Oh, well, I'm getting a, I don't even know, an Xbox something or other, or um, something that I couldn't even afford. And I'm like, well, that's great. <laughs> and, and yet in the midst of that, um, we steal away from uh, some of these kids the opportunity of getting to know what it means to be a servant in trying to provide everything for them. Jesus uh, shows us an example of what that's all about. It was at the festival of Passover. And he knew his hour to come, uh, to depart had come, and that he was going to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end, it says. And during supper, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God. He got up from the table, took off his outer robe, tied a towel around himself, and he poured a basin of water and washed the disciples' feet. And then he wiped them with the towel that was tied around him. When he got to Simon Peter, he said, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet. You see, Jesus was a rabbi. He was to be above the, t the, the student. And, and that would mean that that, that Simon Peter was below that of a servant. But Jesus said, you don't understand. He said, um, what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said, you will never wash my feet. And then Jesus says, unless I wash your feet, you will have no share in me. That is, unless you allow me to serve you, you will, not, you will no longer be in my fold. And so Peter says, well, then not only my feet, but my whole body. He says that there's no need for that. After he, he washed uh, the disciples' feet, he said, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher, <coughs> rabbi, and Lord, and you are right, for it is what I am. But if I, the Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash, wash one another's feet. For I have set for you an example so that you should have it done to you. I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are the messengers greater than the one who sent them. We're called to wash each other's feet, to notice the bruises, you know? Notice the things in life that uh, others have given up so that, um, so that we can be one family with one shepherd who is Christ the Lord. Martin Luther said in um, 19, uh, uh, 1520, he wrote a, a treatise called uh, The Freedom of the Christian. And in that, he says, a Christian is a perfectly free Lord of all, subject to none. That is, a Christian, because you have been baptized in the waters uh, of baptism, into Christ's death and resurrection, you die to sin and rise to newness of life. That is, the law no longer has any jurisdiction over you. You are free. You are perfectly free, Lord of all, subject to none. But then in the very next sentence, he says this, a Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject to all. That is, that we are called to serve as Christ served. That we are called to do uh, the job of, of a slave, of a servant, and wash other people's feet. Not because it makes us better, not because it makes us righteous, but because we are called to serve Christ. Zephaniah, did you know that God takes joy in your lives? Isn't that amazing? When we think about uh, Jesus being born, wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger, the hopes of the world in a little stall was born. And yet God takes delight in his people. In Zephaniah 3.17 it says, The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will re renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. Isn't that neat? That God takes joy and sings when he thinks of you. For the Lord is with you. Emmanuel, God with us. So he calls our lives he adopts us as his own children and gives us a beautiful inheritance beyond anything we could imagine. Now, um, 
as it is with, with any pastor, they're called out at dirt certain times. And at 11 o'clock last night, I received a phone call. Uh, it was someone that had gone home. And none of you know him. Well, except for the Rouches, because John used to work with him. And uh, one of his son started coming here, and he wanted to be confirmed. He's 41 years old. And he went around to different churches, and other churches said, no, we really don't have time. And I said, yeah, come on, man. Sit down. And, uh, and then his father got cancer. And he said, can you come and visit us? I said, sure. Now, I had no idea. He, had, he said, I don't even know if my dad believes anything. So good luck. He might throw you out, he said. <laughs> I said, that's all right. I've been thrown out before. <laughs> And so I went in, and, and uh, we uh, sat down, and he took me to the back porch, and we sat down on the back porch, and about five minutes went by, and we reminisced, and I talked about people that he knew and I knew, and, and he said, so what are you here for? And I said, well, I hear you have cancer, and I'll just shoot, shoot straight. I said, uh, what do you believe? He said, well, my kids don't know, but I believe in Jesus, he said. And we talked. And we prayed. And after that, he said, you know, he said, uh, you can come back, he said. <laughs> so I've been going back and talking with him. And the next time I came, I said, you know, I happen to have communion with me. I don't know. Would you like to have communion? He said, oh, he said, it's been years since I've had communion. I said, well, um, how many years has it been? He said, he thought for a little bit, he said, it's been 52 years since I've been in a church and had communion, he said. And I said, well, it would be really nice to have it today. And so we did. And he teared up because he understood what grace was. Hmm? See what love the Father has for us, that he should call us children of God. Isn't that amazing? more than we could ever imagine that in, in, a, in a manger wrapped in swaddling claws he would give us a gift more than we could ever imagine. And last night he was called home but with a hope, see because he knew Christ. That's good news. He gives us more than we could ever imagine and in the midst of that he reminds us that we are adopted, that we are his children that he is our shepherd. Huh? <coughs> he gives us insight and uh, inheritance beyond anything we could ever imagine. And in John, he says this, let me lay it out for you. This is who I am. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And all things came into being through him. Not only that, nothing came into being except through him. And in him was life. The life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and I love this. And the darkness did not overcome it. Isn't that great? He's given us the true light, which enlightens everyone. He's given us a promise. And what he does is he lays out all the presuppositions of who God is so that we can understand him and say, Lord, this is our shepherd who has come. This is Emmanuel, God with us. Sometimes in our lives we we lay out presuppositions with other people. We say, well, they've acted this way or this is who I think they are. And so everything is, is shrouded in that. Try not to do that. What, I, what amazes me about the jail ministry is they'll walk into a jail cell and they take them at face value. And it doesn't matter what they've done. They know that they're all on the same playing field, that they all need Christ. And they share with them the gospel. See what love the Father has for us. That he should call us children of God. Isn't that amazing? It's more than we could ever imagine. He's adopted you. Given you a beautiful inheritance. So that you might share that with others. And others might know. A gift beyond anything. On this earth. So be it Lord. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Creator of heaven and earth, 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now unto everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you've refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. We pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love for one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.